Hello and welcome to another edition of the QPR podcast. Unfortunately for people on Law for Words who didn't like me very much last week, I'm hosting again until next week or the week after when David comes back and he'll do a much better job. And the bloke that turns off that doesn't like my voice... Oh, he's gone. Anyway, right. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight I'm joined by with three other QPR fans and we're going to mention, not our professions, but where we sit blockwise at Loftus Road. Starting with Paul Hull. Where do you sit, Paul? As G block, G block, yeah, in front of you, yeah. All I can hear is your squeaky voice all the time. <laughs> Pot and kettle springs to mind. <laughs> we also have Sean Walsh, QPR fan. Where do you sit, Sean? I sit, I think, E block, South Africa Rose. You sit, oh, is it E or is it F? Don't you? I sit behind Clive of Loft yeah. for words what's, fame. What's he like during the game? He gets very ranty at refs, doesn't he? Doesn't. Uh, Clive uh, doesn't like refs or bad refereeing and short corners. I think it's safe to say. Oh really? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I hate short corners. I'm behind I never him. have known that. I've seen him at away games where he goes absolutely apoplectic at short corners. You're right there. He also you that wasn't a huge fan of <laughs> Harry Redknapp. Was anyone? Don't know. And we also have Cindy Grohl on as well. Good evening. Who has a brilliant claim to fame to Shepherd's Bush and QPR that not many people will ever have. You know where I'm going with this, don't you, Cindy? I don't. Um, your grandfather, what did he set up? He set up the first Sikh temple in Shepherd's Bush. How many QPR fans have set up a temple? Hey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A isn't that where we go every other Saturday? Isn't no, that but, a temple? Yes. yes that is our temple. I want to know any other QPR fans that have built churches, temples, synagogues, uh, so true. anything right. religious, mosques, anything, because that's the first I've heard He's of. He's a scary man. You wouldn't have messed with him. So oh, that's really? why, yeah. I don't think I've ever built Cindy, anything. is this your first time on the podcast? This is my first time on the podcast. Uh, right. Welcome aboard. Thank um, you. Okay, Paul. Um, and the rule about hosting uh, is I host and um, I get to say those sort of things because it's and, what the host And does. can I just say, block L-U, row F. I, l- oh. <laughs> I love my row. So you've basically got South Africa Road versus Upper Loft on the podcast. We, have, we get a real lack of people from the LZ Road. Do you know that? Because Neil, who is our producer, is also South Africa Road as well. You're, you're G-Block as well, aren't you? So it's like three from G-Block... E block, <coughs> but we we need. It some, sounds like a dodgy it's Australian a, um, sitcom, doesn't it? Basically, we need people from Elsley on the podcast. Ro- uh, F- and Ro- El- Elsley is seriously underrepresented in the podcast, and we need to sort Elsley out. So come on, if you're sitting Elsley Road, you can want to come on the podcast. Drop us a line because I feel you're being ignored. My next door neighbour sits in Elsley. Oh, get him on the podcast. I will do. I'm anyway, we we're, we're, we're start the podcast after a defeat at Cardiff. Mm. The first thing I'm going to go around the room, starting with Cindy, is <laughs> expectations, where we are, and how do you think the season's going so far? It applies to all three of you. So I always start the season with really high expectations because I do the whole amnesia thing for the previous year and think everything was just forgotten and we're starting fresh. So I always do that. I'm really happy, clappy first game. And then reality bites. But actually, I'm pretty cool about sept- um, August. September, I thought, was going to be a bit scary. And everyone's moaning about August being a bad month. But I thought September's a bit more scary. Do you think so? August. Yeah, I do. And are you happy with the progression teams made, transfer-wise, and everything else? Well, we've got, what, was it another day? Two days before the mania that is Sky on transfer deadline day. So let's see. But I'm, I guess there's a reality about who we're going to be able to get what kind of players are going to be able to come to a club like ours at this time. So, I'm cool. Have we underestimated our chances so much we've, that we actually think if we win, we're doing well? There's nothing wrong with that. Cool. I Good like answer. that. Sure. I don't, sorry, I don't want to sort of take your job, but I just want to ask, what's the September run? I don't know. What teams okay. have we got? You can take my job, Sean. You're welcome to it. No, I you just, just, just want to... The money's crap and the eyes are terrible. It's right, Switch, yeah. Millwall, Middlesbrough, Fulham... Our oh, Burton we can ignore, can't we? Because, yeah, Burton. Barnsley as well. Burton yeah. actually aren't that bad. Yeah, I watched yeah. them on TV. <laughs> they're not a bad I'm going to miss Burton, so I'm, gonna, I'm trying to ignore that. Okay. But, yeah, they're not actually a bad side, Burton. Mm. They gave Burton a right good going. Sean? Yes. Same questions. Um, well, I'm, I'm basically very happy with 
the way it's gone so far, to be honest. I know the, the defeat to Brentford at home was a big blow. No one wanted that. Four <laughs> goals. It was, it was terrible. I mean, frankly, it was, it was awful. But, you know, you never want to lose to Cardiff. Obviously, you don't want to lose to anyone. But 2-1 away... You know, at the team at the top of the league, I don't, I don't really think you can complain. When you look at where we were last season, Is that the first time we lost there uh, at what? their new ground. Ever. Oh, uh, well. no, don't think so. Doubt it's it very much. Lost. Yeah, we've lost there before, definitely. When? God, I've been most times. Yeah, because yeah, we had a couple beat. of draws. Yeah. Um, all right, draws. I, I, I can. I look stupid. Sorry, now. Obviously, something that I've been. I used to. Put, I, I used to prefer. If I'm being honest, I preferred Neon Park. Because you kind of knew where you stood, yes. literally under bottles half the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. um, a <laughs> little bit more romanticism about being sh- bottles chucked at you and people Aww. wearing dungarees in the 90s. What's they did. They called a fan just to wear dungarees. I remember they going down there. <laughs> it's very strange. It's like the Walters, but angry. All the things you can remember. Said by about Paul Finney. Yeah. What's <laughs> that? It, Paul Finney's in that glass. <laughs> by the way, by the way. Cardiff fans, waving your Icelandic oh. flags at Irish people doesn't work. Just <laughs> heads up. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, it's like this guy was really on Saturday, really getting angry with Icelandic flags, shoving me face, and I'm like, mate, waste of time, couldn't care less. Not that I don't care about it, but I don't, but I mean, I was born in Northern Ireland. But yeah, they, 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 they there's something about they just don't like us. Finny what Bingo is that her. from the. What the long, what the, the Euros. Euros. Obviously, every week they wave them at English teams that come down because they are the only Welsh club in the championship, so they must wave it every week. <sighs> wow. It's pretty pathetic, wow. really, to be honest with you. I mean, that's, that's pretty rubbish, to be honest with you. But yeah, this guy was getting really agitated. He really thought he was insulting everyone, and hardly anyone took any notice of it. It was a bit piss poor, actually. I don't I'm, think I would have gotten that That's so long ago. Yeah. I, that that would have gone over my head. Yes. I, 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 I only thought anyway. of, I'll, I'll talk about flags later on because Cindy's got a good nick. Um, link, not Nick, a good link to flags. Oh, Paul, yes. same question applies to you. Well, to be honest with Paul, I think the whole thing about the Guinness season, I was just a little bit pessimistic about the whole squad and what we arranged. And yeah. I think, to be honest, on paper, it's probably one of the most average squads we've ever arranged for a championship season. Okay. But we've, um, I think we've done okay, to be honest. I think we've actually done, if there's a school report done now, I think we'd be better than expected, to be honest with you. Seven points. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. I, and I, th- I think that's that's been fair to to the manager and, and the, the the restraints we're under at the moment. Also, three wins at Loftus Road, if you include that that cup, whatever it's called. Yeah, it's not it's not bad. I, you know, I love that. Got... Typical QPR fan <laughs> cup. No idea what it's called. Yeah. What's the cup? Yeah. Round, I, 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 <laughs> I'll call I call everything round three. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. We've so, got a round I mean, three. I mean, to be honest, I mean, if you think of the whole season, I mean. I think well, we we fourteenth now in the league, yeah, something like that. and I think to be honest, that's where we finish. I can't see us getting the playoffs or anything like that, unless there is a ch- uh, a change from the actual management and the hierarchy on transfer policies and wages, which I don't think is going to be. I think fourteenth, and I think that would be an average season, and it'd just be another one to talk to chalk off, wouldn't it? But see, see, I argue with myself a lot on this because you do I, surprise me now. I, I look at our midfield and I look at the. It's not a different got. midfield, mate. It's that defence that needs to win out. Well, exactly. But you know, we got some good players. I mean, Coker's no, no slouch. Although he mm. wasn't, he's been poor since his return. But obviously, there's other things going on there. So we've got to wish him well with his health and everything else. And hopefully, he'll get back to it. A new uh, when Hall gets fit. Um, once Lynch finds his feet, it's always seen ifs, buts. Pots, pans, that kind of thing, and even Bidwell's Manny- had a better uh, start to the season than yeah. he did last year. He's, he's a better player. He's than a he bit was. more solid For from what I've seen. Anyway. Darnell's getting there, but again, it's you know he's it's a lot on the youngster's shoulders. I mean, I don't think he ever recovered from Mark and Sanchez. I think, and he's, he's getting there slowly. But my issue is that we've talked things down so much. I still think we could achieve quite a lot with this squad. It's not a bad squad. I mean. I I saw Silla and Yenny come on on Saturday. I'm just thinking, if them two could just get going, there's something about them two that you just. Silla is a, is a player that like, he's, he's really so, disappointed. I think cheese. he can be such a good player. That's what I mean. And you just think to yourself, God, if they get it right, if we can get them players on all cylinders, and we can get the midfield doing what it should be, which is a good midfield. I mean, you take that midfield above a lot of teams mm. in the championship, but the defence and the rickets that we do. I mean, we've got to talk yeah. about it. We can't. Deny we've made some massive records. Were you the only one that was there on Saturday? So talk us through it. I felt yeah. like I was the one. It, it was really, it was really weird because Cardiff and Rangers have got a rivalry, not going way beyond the playoff final, going way beyond mm. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mm. you know yourself. It's always and it was 
Well, there was the trains, bank holiday. There wasn't that many of us down there. Expectations, I don't know. Anyway, we matched them pretty well. But once we made and, that... In, in, traditionally, over the last few years, we've had some good results in like, mm-hmm. the last 15 years. We've had some great results. And most of them have been on the telly. There was, Do you think of Michael Bean's the goal? Like, like, was that a Friday night? One of the first Friday night goals? Like, I, mean, I remember like, sitting in the pub in Woking, well, like, like 15 years ago it was. It was absolutely uproar when I got one. And then there was a big old controversy about it. Hey, it's all like Bean's handball. Bean's handball. Yeah. That was against well, Brighton. No, no, no. Hey, no? no that's Cardiff. The handball was against Brighton. That was Cardiff. Are you yeah. talking about Marcus Bean? Yeah, it was yeah. a handball was against... Yeah, it definitely wasn't Cardiff. That was, well, it was it, Cardiff, it, wasn't it? That was Brighton. No. We never won at Brighton. No, I didn't say we did. But he scored with a... <laughs> Last minute goal, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> with, off his hand. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Off his knee. Yeah, but no, I always remember Card. <laughs> like, if it, David phrases us all the time. Can I look it up while you're Sorry. Yeah. Um, the thing well, is, what, what, that doesn't matter, who cares? But the thing is, that the, the game I remember was in George's day, which is weird for an Irish yeah. person to say this. Yeah. Two, uh, the 2 2, the, yeah. the Tarak game, I call it. Oh, and you kind of then realise that we were actually going to do this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And they realised it too. They didn't take it as well as we did, I think. There was that kind of, we're bigger than you, we've got more... Um, and Ranger support that day was absolutely fantastic. Well, it's, it's probably one of my, one of my most favourite away games, to be honest with you. Also, I went with a few lads and we, we stopped off at um, Walton Bassett on the way home. Oh, yes, yeah, I heard about yeah. this. And, and, and that, that was a nice little touch as well. Like. But um, I just remember walking out there thinking, we can do this. Yeah, yeah. And, and Mackay was the manager of Cardiff at the time. He said, oh, we stopped their promotion party. We've done this. We've done fake. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I thought that, that, was, the, that was his ambition. I mean, I mean, Tarak ran that game that day. It was, do, a, it, do, it was amazing. The games against Leicester and Derby, I kind of had an inkling that, you know, Southern, Southern was abnormal Rangers because all Rangers teams would have got really massively turned over. Yeah. Talking of which, we have to talk about Brentford. We can't no. just let it go. Yeah, we, we, oh, Please, we, just the don't. The Brentford game. I mean, Sean touched on it. I'm disappointed because I don't really... Um, listen, Brentford are rivals. Whether people talk them down and try and demean them or not, they are rivals. They are local rivals. Whether we like it or not, we're in the same division. It just upsets me to see us... Is something bang you don't need to say that in the podcast, Paul. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, it annoys me to, to think that we can just surrender so easily. I mean, you were there, Sean. I was t- yeah. t- t- you know, it was, they, they've done us with Pierce, big time. Yes, um... But I mean, well, he made ten changes. That's what that'll be about. And most of those players hadn't, I hadn't seen them play together before. No, no. no they sort of basically didn't look like they knew what to do. The defence was all over the place. Corker and what, who was it? it was Corker and um, what's his name? The new guy, um, Batiste. 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 Yeah. So was all over and the they place. had absolutely no idea what was going on. And uh, nor did I, to be fair. No, it was a bit scary because. And I thought, but I did. Think, I think Furlong did well. I think Furlong was. Um, I thought Chair was one did of the really well. Chair, exactly. Oh, so like there, Chair. there are positives to gain mm. from that. You don't want to lose four-one to local rival, rivals. You don't want to concede four at home. But I mean, I don't know. He had Cardiff coming up, and I, I imagine that he wanted to use that as a sort of a game to go and make a mark. I imagine you know Holloway was probably going there to win. He thought, you know, I can make the mark, we can beat the leaders, this will give the confidence but to the rest of the season. To be honest, yeah, didn't, didn't work. you get through that round in the cup, you normally got a good chance of getting a decent side away or something like that, which obviously we need every single payday we had. Was it more important to beat Brentford at home or beat Cardiff away? Win both. Win both. <laughs> obviously, if you, if you take the two, yeah, beat Brentford away, lose at Cardiff away. Or, do you know what I mean? Beat Cardiff, surely beat Cardiff. Beat the league leaders at yeah. their home ground is yeah, a, would not. be a massive we're, result. At the end of the season, then when you don't, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean that's football. Yes, <laughs> that's that's true. Yeah, remember yeah, where yeah. we fin- remember yeah. where we finished last season? Yeah. That, you know, but I mean, we, 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 well, well, we've been some teams away. Good, good, well said. Uh, yeah, but when you think of the, what we've continuously told about finances, about at QPR, is a decent away game in that league away from home would have all. Well, brought money, wouldn't it? But the whole thing about it is, we should never lose at home to Brentford. You should just never. No. Your dad would be going mad. Well, Actually, well, your dad was going mad, I saw him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, my dad's a generation from the 50s, where obviously they, in the third division, where we were, that was our, our rival, yeah? Traditionally, Ooh, yeah? It's true, actually. I've given up trying to find this. 
Don't worry about it. It's not not okay. important. Cindy's looking so, for I mean, the card of Blink. Doesn't matter. Normally, what happens? It when was keep, Brighton. What normally happens when <laughs> QPR lose to Brentford? Oh yeah. What's happened? They lost two times. Everyone gets sacked. Yeah. Mm. Gets sacked. Right. Even, right. Even, right. Even, right. even the cleaner is like checking the toilets twice. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, mean, like, I don't want to take me charges just here. Just happen. It's just never happened. It's just never happened. It's, just it's all, unheard of, isn't it? That's why it took them. Was it forty nine years to win at our ground? It never happened in my lifetime. It's happened twice in the same year. I've told this story a million times. I even told it in the Brentford podcast, which I have to say didn't go down that well with the Brentford fans. Sure I was not. chased by Brentford fans once, and I thought they were Stoke. I was cursing me mate, going, geez, these Stoke fans are aggressive. He goes, they're not Stoke, they're Brentford. It's like, oh, <laughs> they look like Stoke. They've got a deadly crisis. That's the little regard we had for them. That's well, not a regard. We just didn't play. We like Fulham. We didn't really mm. play them unless it was friendlies. And that's not being up our own arse. That's just a fact of how we were and everything else. The other thing we'll discuss before we go to our guest tonight, which is Clint Hill, Damn, uh, wow. indeed, um, is Warnock. <gasps> Simple question to go around the table. Did he get the credit he deserved the QPR? Because when you go on Twitter and, and social media sometimes, a lot of people still call him Colin. Do you know what I mean? And I think there's very few managers... I don't, sorry, I don't know that nickname. Uh, sure, so really? I, I, I genuinely Colin. Know. Right. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're <Sorry>. welcome. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> For those who can't see it, you complained like, last week about I didn't visual know that. versus yeah, but sometimes, voice, sometimes. and now visual is okay, is it? Well, Marvin waved, to be fair. Okay. He's a lovely well, fella, I think I could, could probably safely say that both of you have just waved in a slightly interesting way. It's a Belfast wave. Okay. Anyway, and um, I, you know, you think there's only a handful of managers that have won championships at Rangers. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And yeah. Neil Warnock is one of them. I don't understand why he doesn't get the... Because everyone talks about Warnock's side as being long ball, but that side he built at Rangers was total football. I wonder, yeah. how he's, I wonder how he spent the last few weeks talking to Junior Hoylett in preparation for oh, Saturday. God. I just wonder. Yeah. I'm kind of curious what kind of... You know, he might have been chipping away, going, Junior, 26th of August. Can you imagine? You think? Oh, Really? Mm. Don't you think? I Prove mean, a point. You know what they were like. How much annoying. they disliked you. Who knew really that? You can imagine. Annoying. And that's what he's good at, isn't it? He knows how to just push the buttons. Just push the right buttons. But is it because done. is it scarred slightly, Sean? Because he said he'd write to all the QPR fans who backed him, and he he never really did. Or is it because Fernandez didn't give him the chance a second time when perhaps he should have done? I mean, would we better take um, the rest with Warnock? Did did you write to him? I did. Did you write to him? I didn't write to anyone. And he didn't write back. I didn't get a letter back. I'm really upset. Well, uh, this, I mean, I, I, but it's okay. Paul, it's a great I'm, question I'm about Neil Warren, and it's probably something that you could make the whole podcast about. If you just go back to the beginning of the season of that year, yeah, we never ever thought in a million years we'd win that league. Let's no, be honest. No, it's true. Because we, right. we had a side yeah. that was had some good players, yeah, and. We look now, and we'd love to have them players now at QPR, yeah. And we looked at that side, and was it 10 games undefeated? Went to Millwall, we drew, didn't we? Yeah. Mm. Went to Portsmouth, we drew. Places where we always had it, difficult games, yeah. And we never thought, and it got to Christmas, and I think me and you had a bit of a chat, yeah. And then a couple, maybe a couple of beers, I don't quite that, maybe, allegedly. Surely well, not. Yeah. And I, and I just thought, do you know what? I thought, if we could get to, like, maybe the end of the season... And remember this whole nonsense about the point deduction and all that sort of stuff. It wasn't nonsense, I was shaking myself. Well, so was I. <laughs> I but cried we never thought, that was okay. and, I mean, I'm not quite sure how much money you actually spent, yeah? I think it was two and a half million quid, wasn't it? No, it was quite a lot, but it was nothing in the money was spent afterwards. See, this is, this yeah. is my other yeah. point. No, 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 just Sorry. one thing. So, so we never expected... He's on one. <laughs> we never expected what happened. And that day at Watford, which was on my birthday, by the way, yeah? was a day that, that to me, was better than a playoff final, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. So, because we, us long-term fans had been to the crap at Huddersfield away. Yeah. We'd been up to Hartlepool. Yeovil. Yeah, Yeovil. we have been to all these places, yeah. I know, I know. And the, Barnsley. the real miracle is someone having a good time in Watford. Yes. Yeah, well, well, this is it. To all our Watford-based QPR fans, it's not personal. This is the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. That's a caravan, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> It's Jules, is it? Mm. I also thought it was against Car- oh, I mean, not um, Brighton. Doesn't matter. Carry on. Okay. But I just sort of say, that day Siege. at Watford, because obviously we had that horrendous record at Watford, didn't we, in the past. I mean, it's not much better anymore. To go to Watford and win 
and the match with it and get promotion on that day, yeah, it was the best thing ever. I was there when Macca scored and we won. I think that was 2 0. But that could be memory again playing up. We used to go, we have to walk through the, um, the, the, the vegetable patches to get to the No, no, no that's just because you got lost, Paul. No, you did. You had to go through allotments. No, and if you went on the coach, it, us, us like real people got what the train. What year was it when we had nobody playing up front? Oh. oh. And it was cold. Oh, jeez. Oh. That was every year. Yeah. No, no, it was freezing. <laughs> I, was remember. That, I remember when Dooley scored his only goals for Watford. And it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it was just like... <laughs> it was anyway, but, I got, yes, I got a good mate of mine, like, a guy called Pete Brown. He, he does some stuff with me, yeah. And he's a massive Watford fan. And every now and again, he, he posts that little thing of Doogie scoring against QPR. Again. If anybody can, Doogie can score against QPR, anybody can score. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I like about what we've done in society? We have managed to bring Watford and Luton together and hitting us. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. But going back, yeah, but the thing is with Warnock, I kind of think no one in the Premier League was higher in the league than he was when he was sacked for a no. start. Um, did he bring the players in or did the board bring the players in that he was sort of lumbered with would he have brought them sort of players in should he what have what what managers gone into a, into a premiership season with no signings and not even a shirt sponsor yeah I mean that's uh, never happened okay. oh, it's well, yeah. never happened well remembered it? well remembered wow. you may have got Marcus Bean wrong but you, hey that's a good memory <laughs> do you know what I mean I mean I am getting old do you know what I mean the technology the, you know younger I mean? than me you gob showed um, and more beautiful but anyway yeah. but no it's, <laughs> what do you, what do you, what do you what's, your, what's your memories of um, Warnock Sean what a fantastic manager, and also that second spell, a very short yeah. spell, but also a very successful spell. Yeah. Was it like only, con- only considered one goal? What, it was, it, and then went off to Rotherham, and everyone said he was not going to manage again, and he went off to Rotherham. It was over like, on 110. And done yeah. amazingly. Yeah. What, what, incredible, and they incredible still didn't give him manager. the job at Rotherham, did they? Absolutely brilliant championship manager. That's, that's what it is, and perhaps you know could have done it in the Premier League, but... Never did. Didn't do it at Sheffield United. Maybe that's because of the Tevers thing at West Ham. Or, you know, didn't do it with Palace and didn't do it with us. He shouldn't have been sacked. Should no way mm-hmm. have he been sacked twice when he was at Loftus yeah. Road. But Would you say he was sacked the second time? I think it was mutually... Ah, listen, let's be honest about it. I mean, I like this podcast because on North Woods, again, I love you so much. The people <laughs> who were slagging us were saying that um, we're too close to the club. We're not. We're independent. I, I will say this and I'll get pulled over the calls for it. But... I think there was a power struggle going on at Rangers the second time that Neil came back, and there was a power struggle that had to have a winner. Oh. And Warnock didn't win that battle, and that's why he went. Now, you could argue that, personally, I would have put Warnock in. Def- well, yeah, at the time, yeah. definitely, and with hindsight. With of, hindsight, of course. Always, yeah. But hindsight's, yeah. hindsight's great if you've got a manager you're not too sure about, but when you've seen him lift the flipping mm. championship at your club, which very few managers have done onto the most insane board that anyone could work under ever because yes. that board was mental yes, yes, yes. in every sense of the way and he did it with getting the best out of Adele uh, bringing in Derry bringing in Hill bringing in Paddy Kenny who was amazing as, as I never read it before he came to us so yep. much as a keeper and you're kind of thinking wow he has got the mildest touch when it comes to championship so then to it would have been a risk, in my opinion, when you're struggling in the Premiership instead of maybe Ramsey, who I don't have anything against, but the inexperience in the Premiership playing furlong against Sanchez, etc., etc., etc. What do you guys think? Hindsight's a wonderful thing. But was it hindsight or common sense? Was it someone oh. so obvious? So I, th- I think, but I'm trying to, because my memory is rubbish now. That's what happens with age, but... At the time, didn't he didn't want it? Didn't want to stay, did he? He was saying, "I'm here just for the for a short that, term." I don't, I don't, okay, I don't but, think but, anyone no, believed okay, that. But, to but that's what he said. Yeah. So you have to accept that that's where his thinking was. Whatever was going on behind the scenes, so whatever decisions were being made behind that we are unaware of, or on the basis that he was saying, "I'm just coming here for a short term gig." Um, obviously, now looking back, you think, "Oh, come on, just stay." He could have stayed, and we. We didn't make, yeah, clearly we didn't make the right decisions when we probably could have thought things through, thought about what Warnock could have done, given exactly what he's doing now. So, I mean, I mean the whole thing, when getting back to sort of like present day, if you had a hundred pounds at the beginning of the season, would you say Cardiff would have been top of fifteen points? Mm, knowing Warnock, you would yeah. have to look at the side he was gelling towards. Yeah, but you think there's season. a big hitters yeah. in that league at the moment? Yeah, there's a big guys oh, come God, down yeah. to the Premier yeah, League. Totally. Yeah, there's a big. The big hitters I in their heads. I personally would never put £100 on them being top of the, premier, the sorry, championship at the moment, would you? Nobody would have done this. No, 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 I don't think, I don't but think so. On, so but he's on, an amazing job, but, yeah, with not a lot of money there again, yeah, and he's motivated the people because he's of his footballing sense. 
Yeah, not mm -hmm. about any personalities or about um, his, his, his ethos of football, yeah? He's playing with what he's got. But, but isn't that what you need to be doing in as, the a good, as a good exactly coach? Exactly what you need to be doing. You, yeah. you work with what you and, have. And we've probably made the worst decision we ever made in 10 years at QPR. Once we got rid of him, and the second time we never gave him the contract. Because we have never been in this disgraceful situation we are in a moment. But we can't change that now. Well, I, don't think we're, I, 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 don't, I don't think we're. Well, I don't think we're in a disgraceful situation yeah, at all. Do you think so? How yeah, are we? We've got seven points from our first. Well, we've got points make prizes. Month. Yes. Yeah. Love for words, you're right. I do make crap jokes. I've just realised. Carry on. <laughs> I don't. I don't, I, yeah, I don't think it's a disaster. I think. Yeah, we got, we got seven points. Seven we, points. We, remember, we played. Is it all we the teams? We're not remembering how bad league? he was at the end of last season. Hang on, we're not remembering what the football was like under Hasselbank. That, that at, the end of the, at, the, at the end of the season, he ma Holloway made. You know, again in hindsight, the mistake of shuffling that team around. They denied that they were. You know, trying to see um, what players would be ready for next season mm. because contracts are going out. Obviously, it was clear that he was just messing about with the team. But if you just ignore that and you look at this season, it's, it's, it's been absolutely fine. We, we're, mm -hmm. we just escaped relegation, so all you could do is just ask for it to be better Absolute, than it was. Yeah. And it absolutely is better than it was. I but, mean, there's no... Okay, it, it's better just one place higher than we were last year, you know. Are we one place higher than no, we were? That when we finish? Well, it? this time I don't, I don't feel we were. Well, this, this time last that, year we had 10 points. Be it's because that. it's only August, people. <laughs> Jesus! We had 10 points, did we? Yeah, this time last, this season, last year. Last year, 10 points. 10 points. Did we? Yeah. That's quite good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Can we join them together? Um, this week's beers are supplied by Fontanti Dave and his son Arthur, age six, first year as season ticket holders at QPO. Welcome to the fold, welcome to the family, and thank you for the beer. Hopefully we'll buy you one face-to-face -face one day. The other thing is, if you want to listen to the QPR podcast on Twitter, on Facebook, please follow the QPR pod links, and you will find us. And please, 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 I know I'm joking about love for words and everything else. I don't mind getting slagged. I'll get compared to the guy of um, only me from... Harry Enfield was a bit weird and <laughs> caused me to eat my porridge rather faster than I anticipated. Um, please give us your feedback. I sense please. you're feeling very hurt by all of this, Paul. I'm sensing <laughs> that you're right. Um, I'm not hurt. <laughs> I don't get it. I mean, you know, only me. Only me. No, it doesn't sound as... Anyway, no. whatever. But, um, oh, is it because it's of a the crap sound of your TV programme. Move on. What is it about you that they think is similar to that character? I'm, I'm a twat. Glasses right. and his voice... Is there anything even remotely funny about anything that that guy does? Well, only me. Nothing about... <laughs> nothing about... No, nothing about... <laughs> Sean, you do like that. You should do nothing. Sean, from, was, from your professional perspective, yes, there's what? nothing funny about Harry Enfield at all, is there? I'm not going on record. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm going on record on a podcast and okay, slagging off Harry Enfield? I'm just... I do not... Okay, do I'll, not think so. Somehow. I will say it then. <laughs> there is nothing funny about him. By the way, to Harry Enfield's um, solicitors, I think he's actually brilliant. I don't care. <laughs> and he's a top <laughs> Fun, doesn't matter if you listen to this. If you listen to the <laughs> something about, slightly worried about a six-year-old buying you beers, but anyway. No, no, his, his father's buying the beer, but okay. him and his son is his first year as being the season ticket holder oh, since he stayed with the program. Sorry, oh, you're all right. Attention. Anyway, the podcast has gotten brilliant. <laughs> I can't see anyone slagging this one off at all. Everyone put on helmets tomorrow. Right, we're going let to me just tell Dave that he bought me wine, but so thank you. We're going to talk to Clinton Hill. If anyone wants to butt in at any point, please do so. We're, we're, we're joined by the legend. The defender, the man who masterminded the playoff win, although he'll never take credit for it, but we were at Wigan and Wembley, we've seen what you did. Never. Mr. Clint Hill, thank you for coming back on our podcast. No, oh, good evening, everyone. Nice to be back. Hello. How are you, big man? Are you, first of all, I'm going to be selfish as I'm hosting. Are you buzzing about coming back to the bush on Saturday? Oh, yeah, I'm buzzing. I am absolutely buzzing. Um, I mean, it's a special place, and it? it's, it's a great ground, especially when it's full and it's, and it's heaving. Um, yeah, I can't wait to get back. I can't. Um, obviously, there's a lot of people there that I haven't seen for a while as well, so it'd be nice to say hello to a few people as well. Ah, good man. And if hey, listen, if you score a couple of goals, mate, you might be playing the week after against. Uh, you Middlesbrough. know what? Yeah, you know, I, I might, I might, I might actually treat it as a trial. You know, fucking <laughs> <laughs> keep a clean sheet, keep a clean sheet. <laughs> Neg a few people and bang a hat trick in. I might get, I might get a chance, mate. Uh, no, what you do is you go up to Les and you go, "I'm not being funny, mate." Uh, 
you know, come on. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to make sure I rehydrate, get loads of decent sleep this week, and I'm going to attack it. Yeah, why not? You'll be better than that Mo Farah chappy, won't you? Oh, he's too quick for me. Him. I, I, I hope. You, I really hope you market him just for comedy value. Oh, no. Can you imagine, he'll like, he'll be gone, mate. He'll be gone in a blink of an eye. But, 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 Clint, you can do the mo, can't you, when you're chasing him? Like, Shade, you know, at least uh, I just join in like the Olympic crowd and do that mo thing, whatever they do. Do you know that? The mo The mo. Do you know what the mo bot is, Clint? What's that, sorry? <laughs> hey, you know that thing he does. He does that M thing on his head with the. You know what? It was a rubbish joke. Oh, people oh, laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know who's been working on that all day? That joke. I have. I'm not <laughs> going to do it again. Right. Create your own. Cindy, ask a question. We're going to go round the table. Cindy's going to ask you a question, then Sean, and then Paul. Can I just share okay. an observation first before I ask a question? Because I just want to say, when you were here, when you were on the pod a couple of weeks ago, I cried on the train into work listening to your interview. Oh my God. On the podcast, we, oh my god, you were talking about how you were let go at the club and you were waiting to hear and what happened and oh my god, it, it, I'm sorry, but <laughs> it, it did. I was sitting. I so, didn't mean to make you cry. I apologise. It's because I always listen to the pod. On, like a song. I, I listen to the pod <laughs> on. Be, shush. I was listening to the pod on the way. It's only, my, it's only an hour long, since. <laughs> I, I also, I can second that. You, Thank Clint, you. Clint, you were on the podcast. You've been on it a couple of times. I remember the first time you were on it, you were talking about how much the club meant to you. And I, regrettably, I regret admitting this, I listen to this podcast normally in the bath. And so <laughs> you made a naked 31-year-old man cry. Thank you. Well, oh, you, didn't have to, you didn't have to tell me the naked bit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not, I am naked I, when I bath. I, I, I was really I worried. Most what, people are, Sean. Yes. I, I, was really, Sean, I was really worried what you was going to say there, mate. Thought, <laughs> that's it. We're off. The whole thing's going to get banned. There's going to be a sex story coming in. Do you know what I mean? Now, talking oh. of which, by the way, have you, have you got any more stories of Mark Hughes? The last oh. one went really well. <laughs> I can't believe, I can't, you know what, I can't, I can't believe like, the, the fuss it made. It was like, it was all over the place, wasn't it? I mean, it was just a, <laughs> you it was just, like, it, was a, it was just a simple story. I just like, you know what, I thought I'd share this. And then I just seen it get blown up everywhere. And, oh my God, I created a little bit of a, a bit of a firestorm here overnight. <laughs> Listen, it's only Mark Hughes, we don't care. Any more That's stories? Awesome. A couple of years ago, I did Josh Widdicombe's, uh, oh, I was on Josh Widdicombe's XFM show. And he had a segment where people would tweet in. This is relevant, by the way. People would tweet in um, sort of strange celebrity spots, right, where they'd seen celebrities in, in weird scenarios. And someone had seen, witnessed, Mark Hughes getting chucked off a ride at Universal Studios. Does that sound about right? <laughs> um, what? Genu genuinely, I, what, what do you think, having words with him, why... Why could he possibly be chucked off a ride at Universal Studios? How, what was he doing? How do you manage that? How do you manage that? It's like supposed to be like one of the funnest, funnest places to ever go to. You <laughs> get chucked off a ride. How do you work that out? He must be really miserable. How do you get chucked off for a ride in the Universal Studios? That's an unbelievable scene. <laughs> Was he not smiling enough? Yes, that'd be it. Yeah, on the roller coaster. Go around the roller coaster, still not breaking a smile. Hey, Nothing. don't forget Mark Hughes interviewed QPR and we passed his test. Yes. Uh, uh, good story. Go yeah, on, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not going there again. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else you want to slag off, mate, you come on this podcast no, and we make the headlines. No. I'll tell you what I do no, want to... No, sorry, uh, sorry, big man. One question I do want to ask you is... We lost to Cardiff on Saturday, unfortunately. Um, but what, we've just had a discussion about Neil Warnock. What did he do? Because if we'll give him this reputation, didn't he, of long ball and everything else, but that was a great football inside we had together. Oh, I, 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 seriously, I, how good was it? It was a brilliant oh. team, wasn't it? I mean, it's, just only, it's only when you like you kind of you look back on it over a few years, you realise it, it had everything. Yeah. The, the team literally had everything. It had, it had character, it had flair, it had a bit of ego in there. Uh, it could mix it. It could go long, short. Uh, if anybody wanted a fight, we were up for that. If anybody fancied a game of football, we went, yeah, why not? Come on, then we'll have that. Um, <laughs> I love that that was secondary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, just, yeah, it would be good. with me. It would be with me. Um, <laughs> no, it was, just, it was just a special, considering like the team was literally just thrown together over the course of, what, four or five weeks? Mm. Um, and then just to hit the ground running the way it was and the start we made and... Listen, I mean, you had some special players in that team. I think Hogan Ephraim for the first 
10, 12 games as yes. one of the best players in the championship. Yeah, that's he true. Electric, that. and absolutely mm. electric. He surprised me. I thought, wow, what a player we've got here. Mm. Uh, and then you, had, then you had Adele in there. Um, and then Big Hyder up front. You think, what a player he was, by the way. He was, he was brilliant at Holden, wasn't he? He was such a good oh. player. Do, do you know, he, he actually cost me a new radio. What? Huh? Huh? He had a hell and cost me a new radio. So do you remember you scored well, the last goal? minute? Do you remember you scored the he scored the last minute goal away at um, Crystal Palace? Oh yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, well, well, I didn't go to the game. winner. I, yeah, I didn't yeah. score to the, I didn't go to the game. I was actually doing my extension. We was doing all the concrete inside the hum. I couldn't go to the game anyway. He's, Paul is a great plumber and <laughs> engineer. If anyone needs one, <laughs> Paul Holt on Twitter so, will do a good reads. So like, yeah, it was it was one all many, winning. There's not many. It was one all winning. You can out jump a goalkeeper, is there? Yeah. Put it in the net. You it was one all, and I, and, I, and and my dad's rang me. He says, "You never." And he'd come over the radio last minute. Yeah, but keep you on one. I couldn't believe it. And I thought, oh, I can't actually say exactly what I said. Oh, I hadn't seen this one at Palace for bleeding years. Yeah, right, because it's always been a bit of a baby grand for Kibi. Was that like the bleeding radiators? Yeah, well, so and I. And I so <laughs> I just kicked the radio, it ended up like about in the next door garden. It ended up in the next door's garden. <laughs> I completely <laughs> smashed the radio completely. Um, and then I had to try and explain to my six year old son why I just kicked the radio across the garden. Do you know what I mean? Honestly, Clint, this is a professional <laughs> podcast. We just let the odd one in now and again who tells strange stories. Hey, Clint, to be honest with you, when Warnock took over and we beat mm. West Brom, because no one expected to do that when he f- his no. first game and everything else, no. when did you realise the next season, hey, there's something special happening here? Well, what part of the season? Yeah. Oh, you know what? Um, I'd probably say because it all goes on results. And I think we went, was it 18, nearly yeah. 18 games, wasn't it? I think, yeah, yeah. unbeaten at oh, that oh, start. For, for me, that and season, it, it, was, it was Portsmouth away. We got, I think, uh, yeah, Tommy Smith yeah, yeah. fell over and yeah. we got a penalty right late on. Yeah, we, we'd nicked a point that, that day, didn't we, I think? Yeah, we nicked a point. And yeah, I think, we nicked a point we... I think, like, even going to a place like Sheffield United on the second day of the season, I think it was, like, beating them 3-0. Um, yeah. And then yeah. it was just, just, the way, just the way we approached games. It was, there was no fear. Um, and, you know, Neil Warnock's great. I mean, he just, he, he just puts fuel to the fire for you, you know what I mean? He, he makes you go that extra yard. He makes you go that extra mile. Um, just because by simple man management tactics, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so there was nothing special or or outrageous as the, the tactics or formations. It was just trusting the players that he had to go and do the job that they're supposed to do, and, that, and that's that's where he was brilliant. I'm really curious about that, um, Clint, because I think he must have done something for Julia Hoyle last month in getting him ready for Saturday. <laughs> so I'm just curious, what was, his, what, what was his approach to motivation? I'm really just interested to know how he used to just get people going. No, he just, first and foremost, he, he treats you like a, it sounds weird, this, and it's so simple. He, he treats you like a person. He just treats you like a mm. human being. Okay. You know what I mean? And, and, he, and he trusts you. And, um, and if, you, if you repay that trust in him and, and give him everything you've got, then he'll do anything for you. He will. And it, and it'll go the other way as well. You know what I mean? If if he if he gives you everything that he's got and you don't give him anything you've got, then you don't want to be on the wrong side of him. Um, but he, he's very he's very trustworthy. He gives you that respect and he gives you that freedom to play, which a lot of managers might not do. Um, and he and he, it's just the way he handles people on a day to day basis. You know the, the little jokes here and there. Um, I mean, I, I speak to Sean Derry now and we say how, how no, nobody can can like mimic that or or, or take it and, and, and do their own thing because he's just special and unique in his own little way. Um, and yeah, it was a pleasure to play for him. It really was. I mean, he saved my career. I mean, you guys know that. So I spoke yeah. a few times. I mean, he spoke. He saved my career, definitely. Give me that, um, that little bit of love back to the game, which was missing at the time. I'm going to start crying again. I'll move over to Sean. <laughs> Jeez, Clint, uh, I'm here and oh, I'm fully no. dressed. You'll be happy to hear. Um, <laughs> turning my attention to, to now, I don't know if you still... Are you following QPR at the moment? Do you, do you sort of have a look out for the scores? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course I do. Yeah. What do you What do you sort of make of of the season so far? Some people, it seems to be sort of torn between the fans. Some people are, uh, are unhappy, especially unhappy with the the Brentford score and then losing against Cardiff. Some people are a bit more content. What, what do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's frustrating isn't it? because I think for the past um, God, I mean, five five six years, I was there. There was always something happening. 
there was never really a boring season. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think I spoke about it the other week. You know, we were we either up, we were challenging, or we were coming down, or we were fighting for relegation. There was always something on it. Um, and it's been, I mean, just being honest, it's probably been a, a, a dull couple of years, hasn't it? Um, nothing's really happening. Um, yeah, yeah. The, cl- the, club, the club have had to restructure and go, listen, we've had a go at spending and, and trying to do it that way. Listen, we can't do that no more. So we're going to have to be a little bit more realistic. Um, and it, it might take it might take the fans a little bit more time just just to appreciate that. Um, but going on to the start, listen, I thought they made a, a pretty decent, solid start considering the um, the results pre season wise. I don't think there's many wins, was there? And kind of half feeling mm. the worst, but but then um, they, they, they've done quite well. I think they've got seven, seven, eight points. I think. Yeah, moment. seven, seven points. Um, I think two, yeah. two losses which come from Sheffield Wednesday and no, we, no we, that was we, a draw wasn't we, it Norwich and oh, yeah. Norwich, so Norwich are we always Norwich, Cardiff and Brentford are beers yeah but the Brentford's not, you know yeah, it's a cut Brent, match Brentford's always a horrible result Brent, Brentford's not gone if you, if you lose to them at any time of the season it's not a great result and, you and know, especially on your own turf you don't want to lose 4-0 at home uh, to, to your local oh, right, rivals that's, you. that's for sure alright <laughs> I wish you were there like, do you remember Sean Sean uh, Clint, when you kissed a badge at the Brentford fan and made him go apoplectic, that, oh, was, man, do you remember that? that was superb. And apparently, I don't oh. know how true this is, but this might make you laugh. Apparently, his boss was a QPR fan and he got sacked. <laughs> I've heard the same story. Yeah. I don't know how true it is. I don't know how true, but yeah, he got sacked by his boss, who was a Rangers fan. I, dr- I was drunk wow, when I saw that picture man. and I was at a pub and I drunkenly tweeted that photo with, I love Clint Hill. <laughs> Jesus, so you played your mid Cindy cry. Sean this is to you in the bath. Uh, <laughs> yeah, can, 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 can I ask you a little bit of a question? Go what? A little question. Go I mean, if I could sort of go back in history, you played in the old inside that DOS at QPR and McBurnham scored in the, the playoff semi final. I mean, the atmosphere in that ground that day, must have, it, it, oh. was, it, was, it was tremendous. Yeah, that, that was yeah. Oh God, yeah, it was olden days, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I remember. I mean, Ozzy Dad was a manager it. then, right? Ozzy had yeah, a little bit of history with QPR. Yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously walking off that pitch, obviously you, you was down. Like, the atmosphere of that day was was tremendous, and it's probably one of my favourite days ever at QPR. To be honest, yeah. Oh, well, people like. I mean, like even when I was there, people still talk about that day as, as one of the best atmospheres, and like they they can remember. Yeah. Um, when we get into Wembley, was you know, I mean, obviously in the player final, itself. obviously we lost to Cardiff, mate. But I mean, the, the yeah. whole that that was when we realised, obviously we've been down the doldrums, that we the, the club was back really in, in my eyes. Yeah. yeah. But I'm mean, yeah. just wondering, I mean, like, I mean, for you to like be on the losing side that day, and then then to put the shirt on and come out and do what you've done for QPR, I just wonder how that the first day you ever walked to, if, if that mind me asking, how you actually felt. Oh, what walking? Oh, God. I, mean, I think it was <laughs> a funny story. Actually, I think it was me and me and Desi. I think we were walking um, past the pub. Um, on I think it was after a, a Plymouth game in a friendly, last game of the season, last pre-season game yes, before yeah, the yeah, season yeah. started. And we've walked, we've walked past um, the pub, and there's a few, there's a few locals out there, and they quite politely said to us, "Why don't you f off back to Crystal Palace?" <laughs> we were like, oh. <laughs> so, so I was like, me and Desi were like. Wow, that's unwelcome. That I don't think they really like us here. <laughs> <laughs> that, was just, that was just before the, the season started. We were like, oh my god, what, what's it like when there's under eighteen thousand in there? <laughs> <laughs> they call that so, shit um, encouragement. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just, I've, I've just always wondered, like, right, obviously, yeah. as a professional player, yeah, coming from that sort of like background, yeah, where you've had to take that level of um, atmosphere, and then you walk in to keep your then and then you turned out, and what you've done, you turned to be around, and I mean, obviously, you're always going to be a legend to keep you on nowadays, yeah? I just wonder how that really sits with you. Well, it's, it's, listen, you have to earn, you have to earn respect and, and adulation off people, you know what I mean? And that's that's what I, I wanted to do. I mean, I, I wasn't, I don't think I was a player that everybody wanted there. They probably looked at my age and, my, and everything. And, you know, for, for me, because I can't dribble or, or not make people like in the Delta or put a stick in the top corner. I have to show people how much it means to me to play for for, for the club um, and kind of do it that way. So, so that's what I really wanted to do. I wanted to show people that, you know what, I want to be here and I want to play well and I want to do well for the club. Um, and hopefully over time, they'll get to see that and they'll kind of 
forget the things that I can't do and appreciate the things that I can do. Cindy's going. You've done it again. She's crying. The tears <laughs> are going down. <laughs> Let's cut it. Let's cut it. Let's cut it. <laughs> no, um, Clint, one thing I want to... Going back to the older game, Wayne Andrews. Was it Wayne Andrews, the guy up front? Yep. For all, yeah. Was he actually a Rangers fan? Because legend had it that he was actually a QPR supporter. Can you confirm or deny was. this? I think he was, yeah, because I mean, he, was, he okay. was a local boy, I think. Yeah, he was Rangers. He was a local London boy. Um, oh, he was quick as well, but he was lightning. Uh, Wayne. He was straight down he that tunnel. Really he was well. quick, but he got sent off. <laughs> <laughs> he done really, he done really well for us, mate, at Oldham, and then... I think he got his move and then obviously Fitz always in that team as well yeah he played for the Rangers um, size and all but that. yeah going back to that night I think it was like it was literally one of the last kicks of the game I think when Furlong went through wasn't it oh, don't but you know he's we... gone through and he banged it in it was, it was a great atmosphere like, but... obviously I was gutted because we lost but <laughs> it was a great atmosphere but the thing is Clint I mean I know you've been at Rangers now and you get it but that was that was us coming out of a very 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 dark tunnel with administration mergers yeah. Um, you know, putting teams together with free transfers and trialists, and it wasn't good days. You know, they talk about the money QPR wasted, but they forget we nearly ended up as MK Rangers. You know, I mean, we we're almost yeah. moved down to yeah. MK. So you, you kind of, I don't know if an opposition player you might not realise it, but that was the best, best moment of being a QPR. Well, I was, fan. I was looking at Conference League now, whatever it's called. I think there's ten teams in there. I've seen QPR play. Really, that many? Oh yeah. The tram is one, isn't it? And there's loads, mate. You look. Wrexham, yeah. Wrexham, and obviously two being promoted. Okay. Actually, you know what? You're not wrong. Mm-hmm. Right, Clint, before we go off well, tangent, like, Tram, Tram is a local team to me. Yeah, Tram is a local team to me. And they're, I mean, they're not deep now, and it's, it's frightening. But I think like a sixteen thousand seat stadium, and it's like, pff, what are they doing in that league? It's scary. Well, they should never be there, should they? So, uh, was, that was always a good away day. Now, Clint, before you go, I, I don't. You, you'll get embarrassed by this, and Cindy will probably cry again, and I'm going to laugh. But. I would love to see you back in that dugout at Rangers. I would love to see you back oh. in some capacity because you know what? You get us and we get you. So for God's sake, if QPR are listening, give the man a chance. He's got your badge up to, to buggery. You've oh no no, we'll say that again. Badge up to buggery. Yeah. Yeah. Keep that in. No, Please. you can't. You Clint can't. Lewis. You can't. Badged up to buggery. It's only yeah. squander size. That, that, that's 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 like sort of a clockwork orange. We can't do that. I've, uh... I mean, I've, made, I've made no sick. I'd love to go back there. I'd love to go back there in some capacity whenever. whenever really, Clint? Would you really come made. back if 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 Les I, phoned you tomorrow and you would come back to Rangers? Yeah, of course, would. Yeah, of course, would. Yeah, it's, it's a great club, man. It's a great club, and it's it gives me it gave me a hell of a lot there. You know what I mean? Some, some you gave us a lot in Clint. my career. Um, Clint, I've stopped crying now, so I'm going to ask you another sensible question. <laughs> Sponsored <laughs> by Kleenex. This is Cindy with a question. <laughs> Given, given that you are badged up to whatever Paul just said, um, if you reflect on any people... Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> any scenarios that you've encountered at, while you've been at Rain, when you were at Rangers, what, given your sort of perspective as, as a coach and having had the badges, what would you do differently from your perspective as possibly a coach or a manager with any of the scenarios that you faced at Rangers? Wow. I've, 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 can you repeat that? I, no. I, <laughs> no, that's a great question. It's a great question. Okay, I, I do think it for a living. You, you do, you learn. <laughs> She's psycho islands in you right now, mate. Be careful what you say. She cries and asks so questions. Much. Yeah, you, seriously, you learn, you learn so much from every, every situation you're in. Okay. And I think, I think that, that, that six years, there was so much going on. Um, and, it, and it, listen, I've learned so much in those six years. It's unbelievable. I know kind of how, how to approach different situations and different scenarios that happened during that time, mm-hmm. uh, during the, the good days and the bad days. Um, and it's made me reflect. And obviously I'm doing, I'm doing my badges now and I'm doing a diploma in football management, which is tearing my hair out at the moment with assignments. You've got much uh, I'll help but you. It, but it's helping me. I can help it's you. Helping me, though. <laughs> it's helping me, though. I might need it, Cindy. I swear <laughs> to God. It's having to tear my hair out. I haven't got that much left. Out of interest, um, what is the sort of... Um, sort of what is the science side of things? What might be an example of something you've got to learn? Because I've got no idea about that side of things. In terms of what the, the scenarios that happened. Oh, no, but well, what, what, you, yeah, what do you I need mean, to write about? What, what you're yeah. Score, what you're score more goals than the about? other team? So, oh, I don't want to bore you. Oh, my God. Um, so, I mean, the assignment I've got now is, is pick two key relationships from the stakeholders in the football club. Stakeholders being fans, manager, teammates. Uh, chairman, you pick two relationships, and you've got to you've got to pick the key challenges of that relationship, <laughs> analyse it, 
Oh, how? Please, can I do it? Can I, can I do it for you? Please, please let me do it. I can tell you now, Sydney is not crying. Clint, is that what's wrong with these football badges? Hang on a second, oh. right? So you've got to just put Arsenal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's a never-ending story there at the minute, that one. That's hilarious. Listen, Clint, I live live in North London, right? And when we're in the Premier League, myself and my daughter, who's now nearly 16, by the way, when your kids get to that age, anyway, um, and she's Rangers, and we stood at, um, you know, the the, the train at Finsbury Park going back to Barnard, and they were like kind of... It's so nice that QPR fans have turned up and you're going home and ah, oh, and it's like fuck off, you sanctimonious gobshite. You haven't even won the league in years. <laughs> Do not don't talk to me about my football club. You absolute git. So I've enjoyed what's happening to me because they are the most arrogant fans in North London. I mean, Spurs can be a bit dodgy, but Arsenal fans just. Oh, they annoy me. Like, when they beat us, Clint, you know what I mean? It's like, they give it to you. It's like, look, I love my club. I will follow them in the conference. So don't patronise me in a bloody platform. We were nearly there, but weren't we? (laughs) Well, yeah, but it's just, it's different. Anyway, listen, we're going off track and we've got to end the podcast. So, Clint, seriously, I am so tempted to offer you a chair as a co-host because... You are bloody fantastic. Do you know, you're betting the Philly oh, anyway. Listen, you're going to make me cry now. <laughs> <laughs> my, my Jack Russell Beagle's better than me, Paul. That bar is very low. Yeah, and that dog loves me. No, anyway. And listen, we need to have that pint, by the way. You, you said you'd buy me a pint for the past three years, so I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> Philly, yeah. that... Yeah. If Philly's ever offered you to buy your drink, you'll, mate, you'll still be waiting a, waiting a bit time. more longer, mate. Yeah. Jesus. It's, honestly, it's like bringing your granny to the podcast, isn't it? It would just lag you. <laughs> but listen, Clint, I'm so buzzing to see you Saturday, mate. Well, you'll get that pint, no worries. And um, I'll tell you what, big man, it'll be great to see you back in, in a hoop shirt. And uh, make sure you say hello. And I hope the Rangers fans be. are there. Obviously, we're not sure what sort of percentage will be Rangers fans, but you'll never be forgotten and you should never buy a drink nah, at Loftus Road, big man. I'll tell you that now. Thank you very much. As, no, like, as long as I get one off you, I'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, and, 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 and any more stories of Mark Hughes, gratefully received to the QPR podcast. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, listen, man, thanks very much, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you all. Uh, thanks, Clint. Thank you. Thank you. Legend, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Legend. Bye. Cheers, Bye. big man. Bye. 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 Cheers, Bye. Clint. Bye. Bye. Hey, hang on a wee second here. Clint Hill just said it was a privilege to speak to us. Oh my God. <laughs> Is he having a laugh or what? What a, <laughs> what a man. I love that. What man. a legend. He is a legend. I'm not being I love funny. He's, there's him. a spot on this podcast and a chair for Mr. Clint Hill. Whenever he's feeling. Once a month, he should be on it. Oh, I, I got week. asked to play in that uh, the, oh. the Grenfell game, but I'm unfortunately away. I could, oh, I could have played sure. with Clint Hill. You must Trevor be gutted. Sinclair, I'm absolutely gutted. Jesus, man. That's... I've never been asked to play at anything. Like Sorry, mate. That's no, all right. I'll go for it. Um, right, Grenfell Saturday. There's times when people talk about football, and we talk about communities, we talk about players, we talk about debts, we talk about mergers. We've had it all: Fulham Park Rangers, MK Rangers, Wimbledon Park Rangers. But there's sometimes creepy off do things that are so special, that are so wonderful, that I'm so proud. We have wrapped our arms around the Grenfell community for Saturday's game um, and I'm touched and it's a privilege to be part of this football club, to be a fan of this football club, to see how we have reached our hands out to those who need it in West London, who have been treated disgracefully, disgustingly, ignored by their council and I'm so pleased that QPR are doing this. People will say, oh, is it about money? Is it? No, it's not. It's about solidarity. It's about standing together with these people. Their pain is our pain. I lived in that area. I walked them streets. I, I lived in an estate around there. And do you know what? It hurts to see what their people have been going through. It hurts to see what people have said after it about them people. It hurts to see that we're being judged even in death as we are alive, where we live, how we're born. No one deserved to die the way them people died. So... On Saturday, in a minute's silence, please, please think of them, people. We don't even know how many are dead. And this is the fifth richest country in the world, and we don't know how many people died two miles away from Loftus Road. And that is our community, guys. That's why we're doing this on Saturday. Tony Fernandez, Ian Taylor, Ian Holloway, Mark Bircham, so proud of you. Thank you for doing this game. Right, we're going to go back on to... Talking about football, and we'll lighten the mood a bit because I'm sorry about that rant, but I felt it had to be said. Right, Sean, you were saying... Well said, well said, Paul. Well said. I, 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 I don't know, it's... It needs I, to be said. I, I talk rubbish half the time, as I'm told regularly, which is fine. 
Sean. Yes. Hurt. You're still Sean. Hurt. You're still hurt. Yes. I have to. Is ask. this the Arsene? No, we're doing that next. We're doing it very quickly. Okay, next. right. I have to ask you about the Chelsea shirt. Okay. Because yes. No, so they don't cry. Oh, she's no. laughing. No, you're laughing. No, no you're not laughing. Blurted out my beer. I wasn't crying. Come on. Right. I'm ready. Hit me. Come on. Let's go. I'm not going to hit anyone. Sean. My jacket you, off. you wouldn't oh, feel right. it. It's like McGregor punching your man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? <laughs> well, okay. So um, basically, if I remember correctly, what was it? Uh, ter- Frank Lampard's team won, and then I, the thing that had been organised by the producers that I would celebrate in the Chelsea kit, because Terry, John Terry was on. <laughs> yeah, I know. What? I, sca- I, I, <laughs> I know. I can't. Come this chase. is very difficult for me. Go um, chase. I'm get, I know oh that God. whoever's listening to this is judging me fiercely right now. I, know, I was just, I, I'm at, well, essentially, I'm at work, all right? And, uh, and, um, and so, so the, the gag is. You know, that's sent to me is I have to do that. And so, I don't know if you've ever seen the show. I'm on the other sort of side of the, the TV show. It's not really, you know, I'm not. No, you've, yeah, no, no. Either have I. But the, um, the, uh, the, the sort of joke is that, no, I've not seen it, no. Um, I take off the outfit I'm wearing and I've got the Chelsea shirt on. And it's, it's meant to be sort of parodying Terry, you know, at, when he had the Champions League final, when he was in the kit, when he wasn't oh. meant to be. So that's the gag, right? So that's fine. So it's a light entertainment okay, show. So yeah, I'm yeah. like. So I'm like, yeah, all right, I'll do it. And then, but then what happened was, yes. I think the problem, the, where the problem arises, which I sort of, um, I, I, uh, which I, I was, I was like, oh God, that doesn't look good. Is <laughs> in the advert, the advert is just me and Chelsea shirt celebrating. <laughs> so they've cut it. So I just look like I'm in a really good mood celebrating a Chelsea shirt. Um, I, got, the, uh... I got a lot of abuse for it on Twitter, which some of it I think was real. I think some people what? were sort of like, play, like sort of having, you know, having a, a bit of balance, as they say, and then I hit that word, and what then fine, and then the rest of it was like people were really angry, and I went to, I was going to watch QPR, and I was, I think I put my hood up. The next QPR game, I put my hood up. I thought I was a bit worried. I was like, is someone going to shout? Is someone going to hit me? It was a black hood, wasn't it? I only wear black, but uh, yeah. So um, yeah, good 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 good. comedy. Yeah, but I. Uh, yeah, so I, I genuinely concerned for my well-being, turning no, up on my football Sean. team's ground. Our fans aren't that but, bad. No, exactly, and everything was fine. But there you go. I, look, I was just at work, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay? You, if, get... I, if I could fill the O2, then I would have told them to F off. But I, I, I don't fill the O2, and I can't fill the O2. So when my producers tell me to do something, I bloody do it. All right. <laughs> That's absolutely that, fair. So Did you disinfect yourself and bleach yourself and goodness what else afterwards? Because I would have done. I, I went straight home and forgot about oh. the TV recording. I love yeah. the fact that you're so compliant, but perhaps out of context, you can understand why people got a bit upset, maybe? Ah! Really? That wasn't me, by the way. I don't know. I wasn't this person in context. I didn't, I didn't sign. Okay, I hang know. on a second. I didn't I'm, sign for Chelsea. I didn't. No, I've not done like a corporate gig for Chelsea. Let, let, let's I've not it. raised the money for Chelsea. I've, in his yeah, defence, joke. listings, we did actually have a QPR goalkeeper post a picture. Was That's it true. Yeah, this is our. Uh, with himself with David Luiz That's in so a true. Chelsea show. And, by the way, I can say now, when Redknapp was on that show, Play to the Whistle was the TV show we're talking about, by the way, on Series 1, Redknapp was on that TV show, and I did several jokes that were cut, and I think they were cut by Harry's lawyers or whatever, <laughs> that weren't allowed to go in, <laughs> that were a proper pop of Harry, and afterwards I was talking to, to Frank after the TV show, and Frank said, and I'm going to have to censor myself here, uh, I said, um, like, uh, you know, sorry for having a pop at your uncle so much. Because I went at him, like, properly went at him. And only one of the lightest gag got in. And Frank went, yeah, my uncle thinks you're uh, the one that begins with C. So Harry read that, thinks I'm a vagina. Thank you very much. Right, we've come, to, we've, we've come to us in this show um, already, I'm afraid. Um... And I'm going to start, as we normally do, with someone who's not expecting it, who's playing with the phone. Paul, what's your R's end of the show? And stop playing with your bloody phone when you come to the podcast. Well, unfortunately, some of us do run a business, Paul, do you know what I mean? But anyway, my R's end is, is obviously anybody who's got... Like, an I don't. Sorry? Doesn't matter, carry on. Crack on. In, sorry, Cindy just nicked my drink. I think it's all the emotion from Clinton Hill she's had to take to her car. Weird. You'll find it's mine. I think that's my one. Actually, you had your wine. Yeah, I actually paid. For, oh no, the sponsor paid for it. The sponsor paid for it. I mean, <laughs> you, you never paid for a drink no. anyway. Yeah, right. 
Uh, my argument is, if you've got any spare time with some spare cash on Saturdays, come down to Loftus Road and support the Grenfell people. It's, um, it's, it's a great charity, yeah? And I think it's a time for everybody to like, get behind the, people, the great people in West London. And hopefully we all can support each other and um, it's going to be a great day. So please come down. All right. Cindy. Oh. Um, can please I just, don't cry. Oh, can, I, can I just say thank you for my shout-out a couple of weeks ago when you wish me well for my operation of my legs. So I want to say thank you to my fellow LU block, block LU row F. Sorry, you going to read them all out? No, I'm not going to read them all out. Um, for moving up a seat against Hull so I could sit at the end so I could put my feet up because I needed that and I was in so much pain. So thank you, guys. I love my row. I love the row behind, which has little George. Oh, friend, friend of the podcast. Of the, and can I also do another one? I'm going to do a U. Um, and, and to say on Saturday, we couldn't go to Cardiff. There was 13 of us at a wedding, which was a QPR wedding. So Al Atwood, who got married on Saturday, and there was loads of us. And if you look on the QPR podcast Twitter feed, there's a picture of us singing Magic Hat. Thank God no one videoed it. Quality. Quality. At a wedding. Um, not bad, though. Yeah. And I feel... I was going to say I feel really bad because I was really rude to a Chelsea fan that I'd never met before, but actually I don't feel bad about it at all. What did you say to them? I think I just spent the whole evening going, what are you doing here? And she's pretty nasty, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Who invited you? How are you allowed to be here? You know, I've got worse than that. There's many years ago when we had Cable London... Do you remember Cable London? They were like before um, no. Kelly Communications. It no, was no, cable. No. People might remember who they are. G- guy comes out to put our cable TV in in a Chelsea shirt, wraps the door, opens the door. You're not coming in with that. And he's like, what? I guess you're not wearing that. Go get a T-shirt. If you're going to put the, the TV in that and you're not wearing that, you're not wearing that shite. And he's like, nice. you know, I was tactful. Yeah. And he, he went down and he, che- he went to a charity shop and said, we've got a T-shirt. <laughs> Comes no back, puts the whole thing in, puts the whole system in. I've, you know, offered him tea. He went, "All right, give it to him the QPR cup." <laughs> <laughs> Didn't drink the tea, um, and just absolutely at the end of it, gave me 15 minutes of absolute abuse, which was hilarious. And I was like, "It doesn't matter. You're Chelsea. You're scum. Thanks for putting the cable in, and hopefully it works." Anyway, yeah, I'd, I, I'm guilty of not liking them lot. Well, I don't I, either. No, Obviously. no one should like them. They're just vile. Well, this this was going to be my eyes end. I was just trying to sort of think. Sorry, Sean, this is your eyes end. No, it's all right. No, it's fine. I just so I thought I don't really have anything. And I thought, actually, I've got something that really bugs me. And I don't know what can be done about this. I don't think anything can be done about it. But it's absolutely not acceptable. I live in Shepherd's Bush, right? And occasionally, my worst thing is meeting people that are brought up in Shepherd's Bush that don't support QPR, <laughs> that support another team, right? And especially when it's Chelsea. Mm. But there should be some law. Chelsea billboards oh. should not be allowed. There should be some sort of law. Chelsea billboards in, in Shepherd's Bush. That is ridiculous. It's not that, there anymore. That's all I've got. That's all I've got is just I'm not happy yeah, with having yeah. to walk through Shepherd's Bush anything, and look at Chelsea uh, billboards. Has anybody actually driven past Sanford Bridge recently? I, mate, no. my, my mum's in Chelsea. Where's I, 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 I see it every well, day of the week. Every street corner, every lamppost has got a Chelsea flag in it. Or every, a, fan, a picture of a fan about how much I love Chelsea, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, well, you, you can't, it's like... But as well, you know, coming here, obviously we're recording this in, in Highbury and Islington, and you see all the Arsenal shirts. And I, you don't, I tell you now, you don't see that Shepherd's Bush, and it's a real shame. You don't see the hoops around, mm. generally speaking. You'll see them on match days, but that is, honestly, that's about it. And it's a shame, because it doesn't, it doesn't look, uh, it doesn't bode well, I think, for the future. If Chelsea are going in, mark, marketing strategies, I don't know how it works, well, go not- in and try to take... You know those young those young young people from uh, from Shepherd's Bush and turn them into Chelsea fans. It's, it's, no, it's not good. Most of the Chelsea future. market is actually done in Surrey. Too, well, it is because I because uh, right. I live near Kingston and they used to have a shop in Kingston and I refused to shop in Kingston while that shop has been open. And it's, closed it's, it's closed down now. Well the, done. Thing, I'm terrified about really a Chelsea shop. shop Clearly, in because I have. It, you're, you're, I'm terrified of a Chelsea shop in Westfield. I'm going to say this. It will not happen. I will. No, you won't. You'll you'll (laughs) protest in a peaceful and honest manner, and I'll bring the petrol bombs. Right, good. Um, The thing is about regions, I've said this enough times, please, please, please put something up in Shepherd's Booth that say, we exist, we're here, because we do a lot of bloody good work with the community. The the community department are just 
the absolute bollocks, and they do a really good job. And it's a shame that it's not reflected in the, mm-hmm. as many kids wearing QPR shirts. But then, if we shoot sticks and posters up, that's that's my my, my bugbear, as well as people texting while on the podcast. <laughs> um, that's not me. Um, anyway, listen, um, Paul, have you done your R's end? No. Yes, I've done the first one. Right, okay. Right, I'm going to do two R's ends as usual. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Greedy. Jesus. Uh. First of all, first of all, (laughs) this is good. On Sunday, visiting mum in the hospital. Hopefully she'll be coming out this week. Um, That's good news. It is. It's so easy to avoid scum fans. It's unbelievable. You go in there, but haven't they got posh? Do you know what I mean? They've, they've, They've changed. They've so... And, they um, live in Cobham, that's I, right. I, the best I, thing ever, Paul, is when we beat them 1 0, after me and you had a little couple of drinks, yeah, right? We went up in the pub. We walked out the ground, and there was a guy, and his, his son, and his guy said, and his, his son said to his dad, he's about 15, he says, Who are QPR anyway, Dad? We just beat them one day. One yeah, well. He said, oh, There's some insignificant team from London. Right, and that to me said it all about their fans. He, his dad. Didn't even know the history about QPR and Chelsea. I think the words that came back to him was insignificant team that just won tonight. Thank yeah. you very much. Well, well my, 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 that was the whole thing about that name, mate. Do you know what What's I mean? What's your next RZ? My, 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 uh, I've got a couple of things to mention, which I'll do very, 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 very quickly. I'm so, as I say, we're, we're proud of Grenville. This is going to be a please, podcast please, history, please, yeah. please buy a ticket and go Saturday if you can. Turn up. It's not about, as I say, the charity. It's not about the money. It's about solidarity. So please go if you can. Our area, our manor, our hoops, we care. Go, please. The other thing is that I'm quite... Oh, I don't have to do this. I grew up in Belfast, which I never talk about. My Irish team is Glen Torn. Oh. Um, who are the deadly rivals of Glen Torn? Linfield, of course. I hear people who are from Northern Ireland, they will know these things. If you go on YouTube, you look up Glen Torn Linfield, it comes back with riots on Google. Okay. Can't stand each other. Right. We play in green, they play in red, white and blue, and it's not even about religion. That's Northern Ireland for you. Yeah. Right. But we signed Paul Smith, and I would say it's a good signing. Not the designer. Even, huh? Not the designer. No. Um, but thanks anyway, Cindy. Sorry. But the thing is... <laughs> People don't real people don't realize. Do just year. just just to inform people who Come are listening, on. the Irish League is a very strange league because it's crap, um, <laughs> and very few players make it from the Irish League. Stuart Jallis made it. Um, you turn me the guys from League of Ireland with the. Press are you just managing our expectations? Our goals. But even the diehardest, the most strongest Glen Torn. In fact, the guy who runs the Glen Torn Community Trust is also a Queen's Park Rangers fan who will only buy the away kit because as he's got blue in it, he hates it feel that much. Anyway, J- Jim <laughs> Welch. God. Anyway, this is true. Um, That's commitment to the cause. In Jesus. fact, if, if you look and at... He, he won't get the Victoria line. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally nuts. He, he won't buy, ever get in the blue uber I don't know, no, Won't eat blueberries. <laughs> won't watch the Smurfs. <laughs> won't watch late night adult porn. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Electric blue. Yeah. Shit. No. Yeah. Whatever. Or it's just blue. I don't know. No. Anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway. Only, I only will go out at night or winter when there's no blue sky. If you actually <laughs> really dedicated. If, to this. if you look at Hillsborough, Come up hang on, hang yeah. on. Let me finish. You gobshites. At Hillsborough, <laughs> if you look at the top stand, you see loads of blue and white hoops, and just bang in the middle is me and my mate, and he's wearing red and black hoops. That is Jim Wilts, the Glen. Anyway, they've all said to me, he'll make it. He will actually do it. He is that good from the Irish League. And we have got ourselves oh, an absolute bargain great. of pace, energy, control, and someone who can actually use a ball with vision. So I'm looking forward to this. So we've got two of yours now. We've got Connor and him. Is it two? Yeah, but Connor's from, not from Northern Ireland. He's from over here. Which is fine, but his, his family are from Northern Ireland. It's fine. But you've changed it, you. I've got a new hero. I used to love Connor. I, 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 yeah. I live your ex. Oh, my God. your new hero. Oh this God, that decide. sounds really is bad. That what you just said? No, 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 oh my God! No, I love you, Connor. But anyway, listen. The thing is that we've, you know, people don't realise we're Northern Irish players and Irish players, as Neil or Engineer will, will, will testify. It takes time to adjust to London. London is very scary when you come from Ireland, and people get very homesick. So we've got to make him feel very at home. Yeah. And if anyone can make Ulster fries, soda bread, teddy bread, and is can get harp lager. 10 in and a square smithics. sausage yes deliver them to Loftus Road W12 attention to Paul Smith make him feel at home Aww. 
because the biggest problem about Northern Irish players and that Southern Irish players is homesickness. People don't believe that, but it's actually very true because from someone who took his Jack Russell for a walk down Oxford Street in the first week he moved to this great city and was terrified That's to fix. That's hilarious. <laughs> it's you also true. Is this true? You took yeah. your dog for a true? walk down yeah. Oxford Street. <laughs> We got oh moved. What are you doing? We got moved. Showing, showing them the, the beatboxes you get on the, <laughs> do you know what on, the on the corner of Oxford this Circus. This is a beat. Do you know yeah. what he did? This is true. This is, do you know what he did? Tim, God bless him. I miss him every day. I love my dog. Anyway, he. Um, do you remember you used to get those little dogs who used to jump around? You used to sell Oxford Street. They used to jump. I don't know if you remember. They used to jump around just saying, "Oh, we Jackie jumped in and murdered a lot of them." And the man was going, "Oi, you owe me fifty quid, you little bastards, and your Aries." Uh, anyway. <laughs> and he chases all the way down Oxford Street. So there's me, my sister, and our Jack Russell piling down Oxford Street, being chased by this East End guy who's trying to market dogs to tourists, whatever way you want to look at it. This is brilliant. But that was that, this is what happens when you move from Belfast to Westbourne Park. So um, yeah, so we used to walk from Westbourne Park to Oxford Street and think, you know what, go to Hyde Park, go to Oxford Street. Okay. How busy can it be? Jesus Christ, the dog nearly got trampled on. I was in therapy for weeks. Um, right. So, Paul, if you're listening, uh, don't take your dog for a walk. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. On Oxford Street. Is this the longest hours ever? No, and the other thing is, <laughs> on good news, um, Anthony Ryan is starting to do a bit of a recovery oh, and he's oh, getting goodness. better. Good. So, my best wishes to the Ryan family and Anthony. So, there we go. We've now come to the end of the podcast, I'm sorry to say, because we could have gone on forever and God knows we give it a go. Cindy Grohl, can I just thank you for your first appearance in the podcast? You were excellent. It was an absolute pleasure, and I've I stopped cry. crying. Yes. Sorry. No, podcast right. first? Paul, a podcast first. You talk more than me. That's got to be a record. Sean Walsh, second visit to the podcast, I believe. Third. Hat trick. Hat thank trick. You. Is it a third? The, um, there was one, and this time you haven't been got drunk with Kevin Gallon, you will not end up in the Shepherd's Bush roundabout not knowing where you really are. Vomiting on a tray. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> Paul Hull, how many times? Five times. Oh, wow. you scored, you've been on the podcast more times than Steve Slade scored. Well done, you. Not how I bite, is it? I tell you what. And listen, thank you for everyone who supports this podcast, who listens to it, and God knows we do put you through it, but that's QPR. Please come back and listen to us. I don't think we're back next week because there's an international break, but we'll be back the week after that. Keep the faith. Keep the hoops. There's power name hoops. QPR.